Well, I guess we're back at it. Uh, the players are uh, starting to get excited. I know the coaches are, and you guys. And it seems to be the pulse of the state. Uh, everywhere we go now, college football's back. Uh, kind of the time of year that we all look forward to. Uh, we've, we've had a, a really good preseason camp. Um, our football team is healthy. Uh, our attitude's good. Uh, preparations have gone very well up to this point. Uh, we've, we've worked uh, extremely hard. Um, you know, continue to work through the weekend and then start to back off as, as we get closer to game time. Uh, but we're just looking forward to, uh, to practice. And we've got four or five more days here of, of really quality work and then uh, start to pull the pads off and get their legs back and get ready for our, for our opener against Savannah State. I think so. Uh, we, we've talked about it as a group the last few days. I let it go for a couple weeks, and um, you know, you're referring to they have to create their own identity. This team, uh, because of the departure of some key players, and uh, they're they're getting closer every day. Uh, the way they practice, the way they compete against each other, but also take care of each other, uh, has been good. And as we progress for the next uh, month or two months, that chemistry will be really important. Uh, and the the best information will come from them, because they they're the ones that have to have it. And you know we tell them all the time, this is their team. Uh, coaches uh, will do the best we can to put you in a position to have success, but. Uh, uh, their success will be based on on them and what they want to put into this and, and how close they become as a unit. What role does your starting quarterback play in forming that identity? I think he has to do uh, what he's capable of, and uh, he's not a uh, very outgoing uh, teammate. Uh, he seems to be very uh, level-headed and low-key, uh, and he has to develop that leadership through. Uh, respect. Uh, he has to handle those situations, work hard. I think he's done as good as he can do up to this point. Uh, everything that we've asked him to do, he's done a nice job, and I think the players are starting to rally around him. But he's still got some work ahead of him, and uh, as he progresses throughout his career, it should get better each day. Like talking about Lunt, how much of the offense do you have in, and have you had to simplify it to get him ready? We put it all in, and we haven't simplified any of it. Uh, how much will get called on game day is yet to be seen, but those those discussions took place at the end of spring ball and throughout the summer uh, in preparation for fall camp, and there wasn't any scaling back of the offense. He's shown signs of uh, being intelligent enough and far enough along at this point in his career for him to handle it. So we feel like it's better for Oklahoma State football that we give it all to him and see how much he can handle in the early part of the season. For a team like Savannah State, a small FCS school who uh, really doesn't have much <coughs> media exposure or not on TV every weekend, has there been difficulty like, kind of researching them, studying them, more than your typical team do face? Not really. Uh, the uh, the off-season evaluation is, is the same, essentially. Uh, we, don't, we don't know a lot about them other than what we read, and there's not as much coverage. but. Uh, is it the same as, as playing a school from maybe the SEC? No, it's not the same just because of what you said. You don't get the same media coverage, but it doesn't really affect our preparation. Hey Mike, you've got uh, three first-year freshmen on the depth chart at receiver. Has one of those guys fallen faster than the others? They've really all been about the same. They've had good days, and then there's times that each one of them individually may, have, may struggle based on uh, knowledge. Uh, just absorbing the, the offense and kind of pushing down that wall uh, that, that you go through as a true freshman. But we, we really like this class. Uh, I think this is the best class that we've had in, well, what would be eight years now, from top to bottom for a variety of reasons, uh, with the wide receivers being included. 
How's Calvin Martin been physically doing the preseason camp? Well, he's in better shape than, than what most two-year guys are. As I, I had mentioned that earlier, I, I was impressed with him in the spring. Uh, he's had a good summer. And overall, uh, for a two-year guy, uh, he's further along than most guys that we've had. And so hopefully we can get uh, 35 or 40 good plays out of him in the first game. Mike, with your offense, the way I understand it, quarterbacks have – a big responsibility to get, make sure you guys are in the right play or to at least get you in the right play. Has it surprised you that, that Wes has been able to absorb as much as he has of that? I'm surprised with uh, his approach, his demeanor, and how he's handled the situations that we've put him in at this point, yes. Um, he came in as labeled uh, very intelligent and could, could handle information and make good decisions. Uh, we all know that practice is one thing, playing in a game is another. But up to this point, yes. How do you feel Charlie Moore has been progressing in that punt Good. return position? Well, he hadn't been out there enough. You know, he's only been there four or five practices. Uh, but we have a lot of faith in Charlie for a different a variety of reasons. Uh, he's, he works hard. It's important to him. Uh, he's willing to do whatever we ask him. And uh, he's starting to work into – a position that, that could help us in that area just based on how he progresses over the next couple of weeks. Coach, I noticed you, Jeremy Smith's going to be doing kick returns. Um, guess, how does that come about and how do you feel he's taking that role? Well, Jeremy's been doing that for a couple of years now. And uh, he's a guy that we rotate in on our kickoff return unit. We've got usually keep four guys ready to go. And um, he's always been a guy that's been back there. And the guy who runs kind of straight out, I'm not, not even though Coach, Coach Monga said he's been working a little with side to side stuff, but the guy who kind of is a run straight forward guy, is that kind of an advantage for Jeremy then on kickoffs? You know, kickoff return is all about um, finding the crease and, and then being able to accelerate through it. So um, I don't have any experience with it, want no part of it, never wanted any part of it. So I don't really – I can't give you that. You're going to have to get that from those guys, uh, from Gilbert and, and uh, Joseph and uh, Isaiah and Jeremy. They can give you a better feel for that. I know that those plays are designed for a crease. And you hope that it's developed where they can hit that crease at any particular time, then make a guy miss. There's usually one or two unblocked players. Mike, Jeremy Smith on another level, uh, another role, his running back role, he told, told us out there he's 198. He's obviously worked extra hard to get himself maybe in the best condition he's been in with a desire to get back to where he had some wiggle, lateral movement. How much have you seen of that in camp and how happy and impressed are you that you've got a guy that's going to another level with his game? I think Jeremy is, has given us one and one A at the running back position. Joseph Randall has had a lot of attention, deservedly so, and I've been pleased with both players and their work ethic up to this point. And Jeremy has, has come a long ways in the last two years, and especially in the last year, uh, with us being able to rely on her, him in key situations. And we're comfortable with either player in there, and he brings a lot to the table, not only as a runner, but a protector and a receiver. Not really. I mean, we have pressure every game uh, based on uh, the age of technology and uh, the way college football has just boomed. Um, you know, I walk through uh, the, the house or my living room, and uh, at certain times during the day, one of my kids or somebody at the house is watching a, some college football show and it's live. It could be on at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. or 10 o'clock at night. Uh, it's still amazing to me how college football has exploded. But because of that, uh, there's, there's pressure in every game. And people talk about which games during the year are big games. Well, if you, if you win games that people consider big games, that's good. But if you lose games that people consider you're supposed to beat, that's also a big game because you're not supposed to lose it. So essentially, they're all big for us. Can you put a value on a guy who's been a starter for you that gets a sixth year like Jonathan Rush, was able to sit out and, and see a lot of, I mean, 
Well, experience and, and reps, you know, I've said it many times, is, is really hard to replace. And it gets brought up with, a, with playing a young quarterback. And, you know, your concerns are a guy that's not had any experience and has not really had any reps for the most part. And Jonathan Rush has played in a lot of games. Uh, he's had a lot of reps in practice. And, and he's played on the road. He's been in, in very crucial and tough situations, and he's been there and done that. So uh, there's really no teaching tool or no way to uh, explain how important experience is in playing at this level in big games. How nice is it that you'll be able to see these guys for the first time in a real game, a lot of your young guys? And also, what, are your, what do you want to accomplish with these young guys? What do you want to see out of them in their first real game? I think that we want our team to, to play uh, sound football. We want to get lined up and play fast on offense. And you want to eliminate your penalties, take care of the football. Mm -hmm. Defensively, you want to be in the right spot. You want to tackle well and force turnovers. And you want to be sound in special teams. And uh, early in the year, you, you try to be more crisp uh, than, than what people would think you should be. And uh, that, that'll be one thing that, that I look for is how crisp are we in all three phases, especially on offense where we have a new quarterback. We'll, we'll, we'll really find out how far we've come over over the last nine months. With how well Brandon did in that offense last year, does the expectation outside the program of the offense really just not miss a beat? Does that concern you at all knowing that, that Wes is a freshman? Well, I don't think anybody has expectations of that. I mean, we're going to miss a beat compared to Brandon Whedon. I don't think that any, anybody thinks we're not. Uh, hadn't looked real close and watched college football. The Brandon Weed's a first-round pick, and he's now starting in the NFL. Uh, the other guy's 18; has never played at this level. So there's definitely a difference. Uh, now, the communication to our team has been that that we expect them to perform sound, as I mentioned earlier, and be crisp. But there'll be some growing pains uh, with Wes and how he adapts to playing at this level. We have higher expectations for him than most people, and I think that he has very high expectations for himself, which is good. You're really you concerned about, about your punt returns, <laughs> kickoff returns. Talk about your special teams overall, because that's really the only big change in your staff is, is changing that around. And the kick rules, have, have you come to a definitive uh, idea of how you want to play that new touchback? Oh, I think it can change week to week. Um, I feel like it'll be a big part of college football. Uh, because, uh, you know, you can not ever bring it out and get it on the 25. And there, there's percentages out there that tell you what your best chance is of scoring based on whether you start on the, the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the, or outside the 30. And every five yards it goes up considerably. So some people will feel like if we can get that five yards, we'll go with it. Uh, and then other people from the, from the kick part may try to, um, to take advantage of the strength of a kicker which could be to sky kick it and try to down them inside the 20. So I think there's there's scheme and uh, that, that goes on on both both sides and I think it's based on the kicker. So people that compete against us, in most cases you would think they would feel like they're going to get touchbacks. Uh, and then we would have to evaluate the team we're playing and, and what his uh, average kickoff is and where it lands and then we would have to base that and to decide what we want to do in our return game. Uh, and then with special teams, you know, we've got Ty Linder is, is uh, overseeing all of our special teams, but we have coaches that are specifically in charge of different units. So um, unlike last year where um, Joe was in charge of all of it and in charge of every unit, Ty is kind of the structure and organization coach, and then we have coaches that are in charge of different units. So it's been smooth so far. It's yes. Been no, you're concerned about the depth of cornerback. I wanted to keep you for more comfortable with that now. Well, we, you know, Andre May should be back in a few weeks here, a couple weeks or so. Will really help that depth. Devin Hedgeputh is back out there and getting better. He's he's been off at a full scale pace on a limited basis, and um, then obviously Broderick and Gilbert give us a lot of experience there. And then we have um, Lampkin and Peterson that are t are two true freshmen um, who we expect both of them to play in the first game. So we have some depth there, just a lot of inexperience at that spot until Hedgeputh and Andre May can come back and play full speed. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that'll be within the next two to three weeks. Uh, you know, we move Larry Stevens to safety, 
and it's been a good move for us. He's uh, he's done exceptionally well at that position over the last week. Coach, you were a young guy who played as a youngster at quarterback. Have you talked to Wes about your experiences or, or at all what it's going to be like next Saturday when, when he runs out of that tunnel for the first time and everybody's looking at him? You know, I haven't. Um, I thought that uh, at some point that in watching him in practice and that I would need to have that discussion with him. I think the only thing I could do now is mess him up. Uh, I think he's seems to be very level-headed, and he uh, plays with confidence in, in difficult situations in practice. We try to put him in the most difficult positions he could be in. And I don't see any reason for me to get involved in, in – his mental approach at this time. I think Todd Munkin is a very smart football coach. I think he's handled him very well. And the way those two are working right now, uh, I'm I'm just kind of watching it and seeing him develop. Um, so that was kind of a long answer for no. <laughs> what are your two biggest concerns eight days away from the open? Well, one is we got you, anytime you got a guy that's going to touch the ball 75 or 80 times a game that's never played, that's always a concern. Uh, and then secondly, um, I, I want um, I want to see some um, some production and difference up front on defense because I think we're good enough to do it this year. And we've all been around here for a number of years. Most of you guys have covered Oklahoma State football or you followed it closely. And we've just kind of padded who we were and talked about trying to get by for defensive linemen for five, five six years now. I mean, and we, and we just kind of held our breath. Uh, we, we talked about it the other day that, and they're all great kids and they're giving us everything they have. But, you know, if I go out and run 100 meters in the, in the Olympics, it's not going to look very good. I don't care how hard I try. Well, those guys have done great for us, but they're just not prototype defensive linemen. Now we have Calvin, who's 300 pounds. We have um, um, Tizzle, who's 300 pounds, 295, uh, Rogers. We have... Uh, David L., who's 290-ish. You have Littlehead, who's 320. We have uh, – I'm, I'm, I'm excluding the two ends, those guys that are playing out there with Ryan and Nigel and Cooper and Tyler. So for the first time, we've got a decent rotation of some actual prototype big-time football college defensive linemen. So I'm excited about those guys, and I want to see what they can do, and I'm interested in seeing their results up through the first month of the schedule. Savannah State seems to be like a, a very random opponent. They're not really in the geographic region. How did that matchup kind of come about? I don't have a clue. Uh, somebody, I'm guessing somebody offered the right amount of money and they took it uh, would be my guess. You know, we all know that non-conference opponents now are based on paydays. And uh, some teams have to play games to, to make money to support their program. And I'm guessing that communications through our administration and through their administration, um, I, I certainly haven't had any communication with them. I just know they came to me and said this was a, an opponent that we um, are going to set up a game with. And I said, that's fine. How much state do you, do you usually have in scheduling non-conference? Not very much. With all these new faces, I mean, what's the importance of these, this team working together, coming together and gelling? And then also just, uh, sorry, just coming together as a unit and being able to kind of focus down against the expectations that it might be a down year for Oklahoma State. Well, that was a lot of information for me to absorb there. Uh, I mean, no, no, it's okay. I just, I, I can't think that fast. Go ahead and try it. I mean, give, give it to me again. I'll do the best. Chemistry, how important is that with so many young new faces? Huge. Um, and people that have followed us for a number of years, when we started to get better around here and compete on a national level, a national level, our players started to get used to playing with each other and, and working hard and competing, and everything you have to do to compete. Uh, and uh, last year we had a departure of some key guys. When you lose key guys, you kind of have to create a new identity. And it's very important uh, for them to want to practice, want to play, and do things for each other. Uh, if you play selfish football, uh, you, you can't win very many games. You're not going to be very successful. And so it, it plays a huge role. There's a certain <clears throat> um, group of teams in the country, in my opinion, that are all the same. You'll have four or five, six teams that may be much more talented than everybody else. And then you're going to have about 30 or 40 teams that are all the same. And their success, in my opinion, is based on their chemistry and discipline. 
you guys were able to get your first three games on TV. How big do you think national exposure has been to your program recently? Well, it's been uh, huge in, in from the aspects of recruiting. Uh, I think it's been tremendous for our university. Our enrollment continues to go up. Uh, and, and, and I would think that part of that's based on the success we're having in football. Uh, when you have that success, people see who you are. They, they're interested in your school. And, um, you know, a lot of it's based on television. Uh, people people want to sit down on, on Saturdays. Uh, they want to watch TV. They want to watch college football. It starts early in the morning with these talk shows and goes all the way until midnight. And so uh, when you're on TV, people see you, and uh, they want to be a part of Oklahoma State and Oklahoma State football. So it, it really helps you in a lot of areas. Along the same lines, you guys set another season ticket sales record this year. What's the uh, fan buzz been like, and, you know, for you guys and the sport recently? Well, there's a, there's a lot of excitement here. There's more excitement here than there ever has been in, in college football, uh, or I should say in football at Oklahoma State. And, um, you know, we continue to sell tickets, and I believe we've sold all of our suites. And so um, that allows us to have 30, 35, I don't know how many thousands of people now tailgate here on a Saturday which creates a lot of excitement and been really good for our university. So I know that just when I'm in the community with my kids and things, people say they can't wait till football season gets here, can't wait till the first game gets here. And it's not just the guy that's, uh, that you'd think would be a college football fan. It's, uh, it could be a, a young lady that you wouldn't think could, could care less, but she's first thing she brings up is, I can't wait till the first football game. And so, uh, it's it's everybody in this community, and that's really neat. Going back to the defensive line, uh, James Castleman is someone who is now slated top, as top depth chart. What has he shown you uh, during during fall camp that uh, has, has you know allowed that to happen? Well, I, I failed to mention his name a second ago. Uh, James is another 295 pounder that uh, has got some strength, and he's lacking experience and and reps on the, at this level. But he's come a long way in the last two weeks. Uh, he's he's in the right gap most of the time. He's playing with effort. He's doing a good job of playing with some power down inside. And uh, those would be the things that I think's really imp impressed our defensive coaches. Coach, what do you think of the possibility of your offense facing more blitzes with the young quarterback? How has that been addressed in practice? I think there's a good possibility. I'd say that for the first month that everybody we play will blitz us like crazy. Um, to try to test him and, and put him in a situation and see if he'll hit the panic button. And so we've practiced it, practiced it all through the end of spring ball and all through preseason camp. And how has, kind of related to that, how has your offensive line, you've got some, you've had to plug Parker Graham over at left tackle, move him around, and Wick has been great at doing that kind of thing over the years. Are you pretty confident that those guys will all be situated first game? I think so. Um, He's always moved guys around, and um, the first few years here I was uncomfortable with it, and since then I just really don't pay attention. And uh, it's always worked out for us. Uh, I, I believe in, in our cardiovascular uh, preparation for our offensive linemen. I think it's, uh, it's really good. And once they get into a game that they're able to maintain uh, a certain level of speed based on our cardiovascular shape, and that, that helps them, and I think that's benefited us greatly in the last few years. Coach, talk about the tempo of the offense. How does it compare to last year? Obviously, Wheaton was brave about making the line of scrimmage, getting the ball off, and doing it again. How is the line handling just getting into it and getting off? Yeah, that, that, that's a really good question because that was one of my concerns when we started in fall camp. Up to now, it's been good. Um, is, it, is it as fast as, as Wheaton? No. Uh, it's been about two seconds off. We, we try to snap the ball uh, on a 40-second clock. We, we want to get it off at around 23 or 24, and he's been getting it off around 19 or 20-ish right in there uh, in practice. And it usually goes faster in a game unless they're changing a play. Uh, but it's been really close, and as he learns to get everybody lined up like he's supposed to, it should get faster. One thing that's helped is having veteran running backs one thing that's worked against him is having freshman receivers out there because there's, you know, we play six or seven wideouts. They, we, we've got to run guys in. Three or four players can't can't function in our system. They, just, they can't do it. It takes too much. Well, a lot of those times we got freshmen out there playing. They're, they're on the depth chart now. 
and those guys are out there with the ones. Well, he may he's trying to get them lined up the same time as they're trying to get themselves lined up. So a couple, three seconds off so far up into camp. Could be. Um, looking at it as a whole, I don't know. I hadn't, hadn't really studied that part. I'll say that this is the most talented group we've had, which allows us to rely on them more because we feel like they can help us. Coach Mocken mentioned the unknown. Like, they look good in practice. They, you expect them to, that to translate with the unknown. How, how big is that fear going in the first game of whether this guy will pan out, whether he'll not? Uh, well, that's what uh, that's what I talked about earlier. You know, those he asked a couple, two things I'm concerned about, and it, the unknown of them not ever playing. And it's you know we can go back 30 minutes in this conversation, and one of the first things we mentioned is is practice is one thing and a game's another. We think as coaches we have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. We hope that it, that comes true, but we never really know till we get about a month in the season. Everybody good? One more. One more. Yeah, you named his own last question. <laughs> I asked everybody, all the players, I mean, since I've been here, you've been the same personality-wise. And you would think as a head coach with the guys that you lost, your personality would change, your building more uptight, but they all said that you've been even more relaxed this year than you have been in years past. I just um, experience and – uh, you know, I've said this, uh, again, I go back to guys that have been uh, people that have covered us a number of years that, you know, seven or eight years ago, I don't know, I, I would not have hired me. In two or three years, I don't know why I made any decisions I did. Uh, in the last couple of years, things have been easier. They come to you easier just from experience. Um, and patience and uh, allowing our players to develop and not putting them in an environment where, the crowd, the offense, the defense, the situation makes them frantic, and then the coaches make them the same way. Uh, it's just counterproductive. And so uh, any calming effect that they can get from a coaching staff or from me can only benefit our program. And so I have learned that that's important. And we did discuss that as a staff, that we've been very fortunate the last couple of years to have a number of guys that could calm the football team and some of those guys aren't here right now. In particular, we all know we had a guy who's 28 years old. It's just different. And so now uh, I think that responsibility falls on myself and Munkin and Bill Young and all the other coaches to calm the guys down so they can just go out and play. Because uh, if they can't, they're not going to play very well. They're going to be uptight and they're not going to function. So hopefully I've come across to them that everything's the same and preparation, playing hard, all the chemistry is important, and that's all they can do. Other than that, there's nothing else we can control. Good? Okay. All right.